Once upon a time, in a small village, there lived a young woman named Ifenkeli. She had always felt drawn to the sea. Even as a young girl growing up inland with her tribe, now at 20 summers old, Ifenkili couldn't resist his siren call any longer. One night, under the light of a full moon, she snuck away from her village down to the shore. Unable to stop herself, she waded out until the dark waters came up to her chest. Suddenly, she heard a hauntingly beautiful voice cut through the silence. It seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once. Ifenkili whipped her head around but saw no one. Ifenkili, the voice sang. Ifenkili, come to me. It was the most melodic sound she had ever heard. Vibrating through her entire being, without thinking, she plunged forward into the waves. The cold water embraced her as she swam further and further from land. Just as lungs started to burn, desperate for air, two strong arms wrapped around her waist and pulled her swiftly upward. Ifenkili gasped as she broke the surface, gulping grateful mouthfuls of air, treading water. She turned to see who had rescued her. He was the most handsome creation she had ever laid eyes on. Sunkissed skin, muscular arms, eyes the color of sea foam. From the waist up, he looked like a man. But where his legs should have been was a sleek, powerful fish tail. He smiled revealing a mouth full of sharp fangs. Ifenkili's eyes widened in awe and sudden fear. The creature spoke, his voice still heartrushingly beautiful, despite its dangerous edge. I am Arawo, son of Atlantis, lord of the depths. For long have I watched and waited for you, my destined bride. Ifenkili had heard tales of folk her whole life, but never dreamed they could be real. Yet here floated one right before her eyes. Arawo was an exotic mix of man and monster, beauty and terror. As startled as she was, Ifenkili felt a stirring of desire for the merman. She had never known the intimate touch of any man or beast before. Sensing this, Arawo pulled her closer, his nails lengthening into black claws that pricked her skin. He smelled of brine and musk, and something else undefinable but hideous. Ifenkili flushed with heat under his predatory gaze. In the back of her mind, a small rational voice screamed at her to flee. But she found herself unable or unwilling to escape Arawo's embrace. Come with me to my father's palace beneath the waves. Be my queen, immortal and ever lovely. I will show you passions beyond any earthbound man's feeble imagination, he rasped. His words wash over her like a drug. He thankfully murmured. Yes, before she even realized what she was agreeing to. With a fierce smile, Arawo pulled her into a kiss. His sharp teeth cut her lip blood mingling with the salt water as they plunged down into the fathomless deep.
Over the following years, Ifenkili adjusted to her new life as Arawo's wife in Atlantis, strange underwater kingdom. She was transformed into a mermaid herself, gaining a sleek tail and fins, able to breathe water as easily as air. Ifenkili marveled at the bizarre beauty of the mare city which its towers of coral and glittering sea caves full of treasure. In the beginning, she and Arawo were blissfully happy together. Her mysterious groom showed her endless passion within their bedchamber and introduced her to the carnal pleasures she had never dreamed possible. His embraces made her feel as heady and drunk as wine causing her to forget anything and anyone beyond her life beneath the sea. In unguarded moments, though, Ifenkili's thoughts would stray back to the human world she left behind, and she would feel a pang of longing for her family and tribe. But always, her husband was quick to distract her with his heated caress which made her dizzy with desire once again. As time went on, however, Arawo became increasingly controlling and cruel. The burning passion between them cooled to bitterness and fear. His savage feats of aggression left Ifenkili bruised, making her cower in his presence. He kept her confined to their apartment in his father's palace and bid her wear outlandish costumes of shells and feathers during their increasingly violent lovemaking. If she dared stray from his side or disobey his whims, Arawo would fly into a hysterical fury or refuse to touch her for weeks on end. Worse, he began bringing her before King Atlantis' court to demonstrate his utter domination over his surface bride. Forced to kneel naked at Arawo's feet before the cold, unblinking eyes of the May folk, Ifenkili swallowed her humiliation as they jeered and mocked her. When Arawo deemed she had been shamed enough, he would lead her back to their chambers and subject her to the cruel torment of his warped desires. Exhausted and despairing, she gradually retreated into a shell of mute acceptance, no longer resembling the joyful young maiden who willingly left her world behind. Ifenkili might have endured in this state indefinitely, had fate not intervened. Why wandering listlessly along an outer tunnel of the mere city? She came across another air breather, imprisoned in a crude gibbet of bone and rotten seaweed. At first, she thought her eyes were playing tricks on her. But no, the emaciated prison creation was undeniably human. Ifenkili cautiously drifted toward the gibbet, hardly daring to believe what she saw. The captive lifted his head weakly as she approached. With a start, she recognized him as one of the warriors from her tribe. Ekude, she cried in astonishment. Her clan's mate stared at her with hollow eyes and rapsed. Ifenkili, is it truly you? We all thought you are dead these long years. Overjoyed at this chance reunion with someone from her lost human life, Ifenkili grasped Ekude's charcoal hands through the cage. Oh, Ekude, what foul misfortune brought you to this accursed kingdom? Haltingly, in a hoarse whisper, the warrior told his tale. He had been captured while on a trading voyage to the northern isles, 
when his ship was attacked and sunk by Arawo himself, carried half drowned to the seabed, Ekude awoke chained in this cage to be tormented at his captor's pleasure. He knew not how long he had languished, thus in darkness and despair. Weeping, he faintly related her own story. The siren song that lured her from home, her doomed transformation into Arawo's unwilling sea queen. Ekude was astonished and enraged to discover his friend's plight. This cannot continue, Ifenkili. We must together plan an escape back to the surface world. Hope fled in Ifenkili's breast at the thought. Surely she had suffered enough abuse at Arawo's cruel hands over the endless years. Gazing at poor Ekude, she knew neither of them could survive much longer under the Memen's torments. But how to break free of this ocean prison? Arawo rarely let Ifenkili out of his sight for long and constantly boasted there was no escape from Atlantis' realm beneath the waves. As the two captives conspired feverishly, a hunting party led by Arawo himself suddenly appeared, returning with nets full of failing sea beasts. Ifenkili barely had time to hide herself before Arawo spied her speaking to his wretched prisoner, enraged that his wife would dare show pity to his plaything. Arawo savagely beat her in front of the stunned hunting party until Ifenkili lost consciousness. She awoke much later in her chamber, her face bruised and body aching from Arawo's blows. But she also awoke with iron purpose. Tonight, she would make her stand against her cruel husband and flee his nightmare domain with Ekude. Enough was enough. Either she made her escape this very night, or Arawo's sadistic madness would destroy her. Creeping from her solitary apartment, Ifenkili stately made her way to the gibbet cage on the outskirts of the town. A pair of guards stood watch, but she managed to lure them away by feigning distress in a darkened tunnel. Once the brutish memen moved off to harass her, Ifenkili doubled back to free Ekude, producing a jagged shard of coral she had hidden. Ifenkili soared at his restraint until finally they snapped open. Wasting no time, they immediately turned to swim up the long treacherous tunnel towards freedom. They had not gone far when a horrific shriek of rage echoed through the water. Arawo, he had discovered Ifenkili missing and raised the alarm. Causing their luck, Ifenkili seized Ekude's wrist and put on a desperate burst of speed as the screams and chaos behind them grew. The way seemed endless as they swam against the dark current flowing from the mer city. Ifenkili's heart pounded with terror as Arawo's enraged cries drew closer. Just when she thought her strength would fail, the water began to grow lighter. They must be nearing the surface. With a final exhausting surge, two heads broke through the waves into blessed open air and moonlight. Gasping with relief at their narrow escape, Ifenkili helped the weakened Ekude stay afloat as they struck out for shore. But their ordeal was not over yet. With a roar like an avalanche, Arawo erupted from the sea before them, his fangs bared and tail thrashing. You will not escape me, wife, he thundered, 
You belong to me. Ifenkili cowered back, clinging to Ekude. Arawo advanced on them, mother in his glowing green eyes. But just as he reached to seize Ifenkili and drag her back to his nightmare realm below, Ekude gave a bold shout and struck at the man with a jagged piece of driftwood. Dark blood bloomed in the water as Arawo recoiled from the unexpected blow, hauling in pain and frustration. Taking advantage of his confusion, Ekude grabbed Ifenkili's hand once more. Swing, he cried, summoning the last dregs of their energy. The two captives made for sure as Arawo trashed in the swell behind them, still bellowing his rage. At long last, he faintly felt sand beneath her fins. Too exhausted to swim further, she collapsed halfway onto the beach. Turning onto her back, she saw a kude still battling the mammal in the shallows. Pummeling him with the makeshift claw. Walls of water smashed over them both as Arawo twisted like a maddened serpent. He faintly crawled desperately further up the slope, calling encouragement to her clan's mates. As the first delicate light of dawn touched the horizon, he could they manage to land a final blow squarely on Arawo's head. With an unearthly shriek, the man slowly sank beneath the waves, staining the foam with dark blood. Panting with exhaustion, Ekude staggered up to collapse beside Ifenkili on the sand. Disbelieving, she touched her fingers to her throat. After uncounted years, she was finally free from her nightmare existence under the sea. Laughing and weeping together, the two friends gazed up as the sun broke fully over the edge of the world, baiting them in warmth and golden light. Even Kili's next smile held a glint of sadness. Though her soul exalted at this hard-won deliverance, she knew in her heart she could never return to live fully among humans. The long years in the mere city had changed her irrevocably. She was now a creature of two worlds, belonging fully to neither. But looking at dear Ekudes beside her, she knew she would find community again with her people. Hand in hand, mermaid and man turned towards the palm trees, fringing the shore. A thread of smoke beyond the tree line promised refuge. He thankfully took a deep breath and together they began the long, incredulous journey back to humanity once more.